on the Raiders side we'll get to see last year's first overall pick in the WHL Bantam draft Caden Gooley in the lineup he'll likely nab a spot on this Raiders blue line as they try to compete for an East Division crown he's a big mobile point producing defenseman he piled up the points in Bantam and Midget big things are expected out of him for, for Prince Albert just four picks after him the Blades picked up a defenseman of their own Aiden De La Gorgian Dare. Uh, you recently stumbled upon something interesting involving this new form of curling. It was quite the find, Sean. Now, after it made its Olympic debut, it seems like everyone in the curling world was talking about mixed doubles. It's faster, it's more unpredictable, and easier for the casual fan to watch on TV. But many still didn't know exactly what they're watching. Luckily, I was able to find a very handy mixed doubles curling introductory video in our CTV archives. And judging by the quality of the tape, Looks like it was made back in the early 90s. Hi, I'm Kirk Myers, one half of Canada's mixed doubles curling team for the first ever Curling World Cup. And Briar Bronze medalist for Team Saskatchewan. <laughs> mixed doubles curling is exploding in popularity, even becoming an Olympic event. But many of you are still unaware about what's happening here out on the ice. Here's what you need to know about mixed doubles curling. Teams consist of one man and one woman. There are two rocks in play at the start of every end. One in the back forefoot and also a rock of the other color placed halfway between the house and the hog line. While one person throws, they have the option of sweeping their own rock while the other person calls line. Conversely, team members can sweep for each other. Each team throws five rocks an end. One member of the team must throw the first and last rock, while the other throws the three in between. You may not remove any rocks from the house until after the fourth rock of the end. Teams that do are penalized by that stone being removed. This style of play is an important part of why mixed doubles curling is growing in popularity, speeding up the game and making for unpredictable results. Whoa! Don't go anywhere. You're almost ready to be a mixed doubles curling rock star. Additionally, there's something called the option, given to the team which did not score in the previous end. They can select which of the two rocks starting in play is theirs, with the hammer going to the team with the rock in the house. Lastly, there is the power play, which a team can only use once a game when they have the hammer. Starting an end, they can choose to place a rock on the edge of the eight foot with the back edge touching the T-line. The opponent's rock is then placed in line with the rock in the house. There, now you're a mixed doubles curling expert. Get out there and get curling. See you at the Curling World Cup in China. So there you have it. Special thanks to Zach Greenhorn in production for helping me find that tape. The Curling World Cup starts next Wednesday, September 12th in China. Dating back to 2009, they've played 17 games. The Huskies have won just three times. With me to break down tonight's game is voice of the Huskies, Dave Thomas. Dave, those are ugly numbers. <laughs> What's the key to turning things around for Saskatchewan against Calgary, starting with tonight's game? Pat, one of the worst cliches in sports, your best defense is going to be offense. Players and the media alike are still getting to know him, so we thought, what better way to get to do that and talk a little hockey at the same time than over a little coffee? Get my bearings on me a little bit. Taking the head coaching job for the Saskatoon Blades turned out to be an easy decision for Mitch Lyle. Right the ring, but there's know. a lot that comes with leaving your family behind and moving a third of the way across a continent. It's an adjustment. I mean, I've spent the last 15 years living in the United States. You know, things are done a little bit different in each country. I'm still trying to figure out Circle Drive a little bit. Especially here. when that job puts you at the helm of a multi-million dollar franchise yeah. and brings pressures that most people would never dream of having. I think you're responsible for 24 different personalities. And I think the biggest challenge as a coach is trying to get those 24 personalities to buy into the same team goal. Every day is not going to be perfect, that's, but that's life. Almost Over coffee, which he likes black, it becomes apparent why he was picked to fill the role. Yeah, let, let's just be let's just be good at what, need, what we need to do today. You can see his passion for the sport that he's devoted his entire life to. We all can't be NHL players, can't all be pros, but you can be a husband, you can be a dad, you can be a, an employee of a company in town or, or your hometown. There, there's a lot of life lessons that are taught in the game of hockey. 
So when it comes to this franchise and fan base, we've seen the losses pile up and are craving another trip to the postseason. He knows exactly what he's getting into. And quite frankly, he's looking forward to it. The result of winning hockey games, um, it, it brings people in or brings people back. And uh, I think as a staff and an organization, we understand that. Every day, I just want the guys to come to the rink and, and just feel like when they leave, that they've, they've accomplished something in their day. Because yeah. I believe that if we can do that over time, it will translate into hopefully more wins than the losses. To do. Well, historically, that would be the case, Sean. The Huskies have gotten the better of the Bears all time with 53 wins and 33 losses. In fact, they've won six of their last eight meetings. Their last win came against the Alberta Golden Bears. Now, unfortunately for the Huskies, that win came just about a year ago, September 8th, 2017 here at Griffith Stadium. After that, the Huskies lost six straight games, including a blowout loss to these Bears, 49-23 in Edmonton. After those six straight losses, they missed the playoffs for the first time since 2001. 